What is up, y'all? Uh, coming back, coming at you with a sort of different video. So I've recently joined up with a smaller tournament, a f basically a friends tournament. Uh, some people I know online, um, and a couple people I know in person. Just wanted to do a nine-person monotype tournament. Uh, and so I'm jumping in, I'm playing Electric, it's a best two out of three league, and I was just gonna throw a little bit of analysis. Uh, I'll say right off the bat, we are missing games for this, and we are missing one of the games from this set. Um, this set was a 2-0 win for Alistair, um, or Clover, pardon me, who ended up using just ice and dragon moves against stones, dragon types, um, yeah. So we're going to jump right in it with Catter versus Caller. First match we have, this is Bug versus Dark. So Catter is at a significant advantage going into this. Um, immediate lead speculation. Incineroar is very valuable in this game. Between Intimidate and look at this team, we're talking probably four or five physical attackers. And Shuckle's not a special attacker. Probably five. Um, so Incineroar is huge in this matchup, uh, Flash Fire, Sent to Scorch could give it some trouble, Shuckle could give it some trouble. Um, notably Tyranitar is also good here, although a little bit weaker against the selection we're seeing, it's really its main place is against Sent to Scorch. Uh, otherwise, Honchkrow is a valuable, uh, Mon here, and Sableye can do a lot of mischievous stuff. So let's take a look at these lead matchups. We've got an Absol lead. I was not expecting that. Uh, Shuckle, absolutely not surprising. Mega Absol. I thought it became a fairy type, doesn't it? Picks up Magic Bounce, which makes it a really good lead against Shuckle. I, I forget about this Pokemon. And we see Gastro Acid, which should, yes, get reflected. And then we see the third sword stance. Infestation is going to deal a little bit of damage and be a, some passive chip, but this is a very powerful Absol. Rock Slide, absolutely eviscerating a Sil Valley switch. In comes Galissapod. Hits a... Oh, yeah. Yep, first impression will do it. Uh, if it had picked up a fairy type, he'd win a Mega Vault like it totally should. It would have been helpful, but... Running Drill Peck instead of Brave Bird pays off here because of Emergency Exit, basically giving you free turns. But it, uh, Brave Bird would have killed. Um, Drill Peck's just a lot weaker than Brave Bird. Like, it's nice to have the consistency, but... Also, if I said a little nasally, I am painfully congested. So we see it is... Hey, Boots and Cineroar. Sticky webs are going down. Knock off gets rid of the leftovers. I prefer mental herb. The longevity isn't nearly as important on Chuckle. But probably wouldn't have mattered here. We see a parting shot. Gonna leave the Shuckle alive to probably throw off a gastro acid, if I had to guess. Not doing much else. I'm uh, not gonna do anything at this point. Tyranitar gets up the sand. If it's Dragon Dance, yep, that's exactly what we see. We're gonna see an infestation thrown off, but Shuckle is way too passive in the face of a Dragon Dancing Tyranitar. This could be a sweep right here. Stays in and just watches it just dance as you deal 1% with an infestation. You have to run. Get that Shuckle out of there. No! Switch! Please! You're dealing 3%! It's... Uh, yeah, you've got some static damage. Okay, finally switches out into a Glissopod that dies on the switch in. Uh, we see an Earthquake. Interesting bringing Earthquake against the Bug team. Um, we see Swolipede is... Uh, <laughs> sorry, uh, Buzzwool is going to take that heartily because you're using Earthquake into it. Uh, some strange plays out the bat here, but 
Now we have a very threatening Sableye. It should be hard checked by a Sableye here. I've been a very threatening Buzzwool, of course. Shuckle comes in, eats a lot of damage. Um, I expected this to be the Mega on the team. Interesting seeing just a normal Sableye. Um, it current, it's kind of at parody right now. Lo-fi hip-hop beats gets off a sword stance while it just gets nightshaded. Will-O-Wisp would be really helpful here. I'm pretty sure Sable, I guess Will-O-Wisp. Bullet Punch is going to be a two-hit KO, leaving Scizor pretty bludgeoned. We see a Protect isn't going to matter if I'm, unless there's some weird calcs going on here. Like, really weird calcs, like little cup calcs. What the hell? We see a sand tomb when a bullet punch was taking the kill there. And instead, Sableye gets to live another day. Huge misplay by Catter Catter. Rocks are such a big deal. I don't think, I think the only defogger here would be Sylvali. Uh, defense drops from Fire Lash mean recover spam will not be sustainable for the Sableye here. We see it switching out into an Insane, which gets up an Intimidate and kind of... This matchup's good into the rest of this team. Leech Life does a lot more than I was expecting there. Uh, knockoff dealing a lot in return. We see an Expert Belt come out. Interesting item. Honchgrow comes in, eats a Leech Life for a lot of damage at minus one. Senta Scorch just hits hard. Uh, looks like Haunch Crow should be able to clean this up. I doubt Buzzwool is taking a plus one quad effective drill pack, especially at 44%. And yes, Haunch Crow is going to clean that up, and Idiotic Garbage, otherwise known as Colin, is going to take the first match. Rolling right along into the second match, we've got same teams. Uh, notably, you cannot switch between games in a match, uh, which is a rule I use in all my leagues, too. It's, it's a good rule. So, I think, I'm hoping Catter sees the outs here. Scizor is very valuable here. Don't waste it. Uh, Silvalli's got value. Don't let Shuckle sit in and be used as setup fodder. Uh, as for Colin, I think uh, angle more towards your wing cons and be more conscious of Catter Catter's outs. And you'll, we see another Absol lead into a Silvalli bug lead this time. Which prompts a switch into Incineroar, which probably hard counters this Silvalli, although it does take neutral from bug attacks. Although that's the best you could do when you're playing Dark. Parting shot is going to switch out the Incineroar. Uh, you could, we could see a bunch of, uh, sword stances get set up again here. Yep, we see a sword stance go up on the Absol. Mega Scizor is revealed. Rock Slide only does 44. And Bug Bite crits for the one shot. I really like Catter Catter's position. I assume we're seeing, yes, a Flamethrower. Uh, wouldn't have been surprised to see a Fire Blast there. Brutus comes in very, I mean, yes, just invites in the Tyranitar. That is the problem with the Shockle. It invites in every setup sweeper on the team. And it stays in. It's going to set up webs, I assume. As a Dragon Dance goes up, I really hope this Tyranitar has more attacking moves than just Earthquake. 2% for the Infestation. After leftovers will total 12% dealt. I hope we see a, a third Dragon Dance here. God, do you not have a rock move? What is happening? Okay, there's there's finally the Rock Slide. I guess Earthquake... Um, rock Slide probably does less into... No, Stab. I think it does a little bit more into a Shuckle. Rock Slide might just clean up this game, although Buzzwool in the back does have a meaty defense stat. In fact, I'd probably be angling to switch out my T-Tar at this point. Although a flinch could just clean up this game. So I, I don't hate just uh, f fishing for the flinch there, because you can probably just bring in Honchcrow at this point and finish it up. 
as we see Honchkrow does come in. It has Moxie, notably. It might be Scarfed. Um, I don't know if that Buzzwool is max speed. I do love me a Scarf Moxie. I hope you just see, yep, Stan. Plus one Drill Pick only doing 41, but God, there's... Suppressing Moxie is slightly valuable, but this is so passive. Not even toxic. Infestation just... Ugh. It's like a normal poison. Brutus goes down, and I can't imagine Centa Scorch can withstand the onslaught of uh, apparently even one drill pack. I thought it would take one. Uh, Indiotic Garbage picks up the second game and ends up moving on to fight Sir Axlot. Uh, I will say we only have one match, so I will say the winner of this game uh, goes on to win the match. Um, so we've got Grass versus Dark, a neutral matchup on both sides. We see bringing the Sidui into the Dark team, very interesting. Uh, and the Celebi into the Dark team, two weaknesses. I mean, we do see Tyranitar coming, which is weak to Grass over here. So some a, a couple blunders there. I think this is just the same team that was used in the first game. Uh, Hunchcrow is probably your end game in this matchup, if I'm calling. I am angling towards a Honchcrow endgame, trying to whittle down the things that threaten me. Um, especially, like, uh, even just, like, a possible, like, Swiss from Ludicolo, but honestly, this team is very threatened by a, a bird spam Honchcrow. If I'm over here... I just, I, I guess I just try to get any status off I can and try and withstand the onslaught of offense. Because the offense here is meager. We see a Decidueye lead into a T-Tar lead. Uh, I assume we see the rocks go up. A Tailwind goes off. You don't see Tailwind in singles all that often. Uh, we get the reveal of leftovers on Decidueye. Uh, Kololoko comes in. We see a Dragon Dance coming up. So I guess it's Earthquake Rock Slide, uh, Quake Slide, which is decent coverage. Energy Ball only dealing 74 because of Tyranitar's actually solid bulk. And Rock Slide dealing 80 and the sand is gonna pick him off. Wow. That plus one attack was huge. Um, yeah, I, I, I was gonna say, I think Sceptile's faster. Uh, low Kick is gonna knock down Mr. Tyranitar. But that does let in Honchcrow, and Honchcrow is a huge threat. Especially without, I think Ludicolo, oh, and switching in there ends up chunking the Celebi and giving your first Moxie boost. I know Drill Pack helps with longevity. I think Brave Bird helps you pick up those one-hit KOs so that it might be better. Drill Peck is gonna end up picking another kill. Just, is this just a sweep? I wouldn't be surprised. And I, I'm just, I guess it, yeah, it's it's gotta be Scarfed Honchcrow. Honchcrow really showing its value in these two games. Sucker Punch dealing a, me a pretty meaty 30 for a resisted hit. Uh, I'm a big fan of Cacturn. It is not going to be the savior of this game. With a solid 5-0 win with Colin. And that has Colin advancing into the quarterfinals, actually. One second. All right, which leads us with, leads us straight into my match, where I'm I'm playing Electric versus Steel. Immediately, I do see three ground types, which is a huge threat. Um, let me do a bit of team analysis. What I what I was going for with this team. So I've got a Choice Scarf Magnet Pull Magnezone. Um, the idea was I have Choice Scarf Body Press is the big thing here, and I was hoping that I could catch something like an Excadrill on the Revenge with a Body Press. That was its big thing, it can hold in those electric types. 
Ronan Wash is key to this team. Uh, with leftovers and some bulk in, and some HP investment, its bulk is so solid. Uh, I get to fire off Hydro Pumps and Volt Switch Around and Will-O-Wisps, and then this last slot's a little flexible. I want to defog into the Steel Team that I was almost certain would have rocks galore. Next up, I have Zapdos. I will note this team has four Pokemon that are immune to ground. Uh, two of which have are flying types, uh, two of which are levitators. Zapdos is leftovers, also has some bulk investment, kind of similar to the Rotom, angling towards bulk. But its main thing is firing off heat waves and discharges for solid damage, roost to stay healthy, and whirlwind to handle setups threats. Mega Manetric is one of the Pokemon that I bring to almost every matchup. Uh, it's has immense value. Uh, it's probably the best electric mega. Um, it gets intimidate when it mega evolves, which is huge for handling physical threats. And overheat is great for melting steel types. I also have flamethrower for more consistency, and then thunderbolt and bolt switch. Next up, we have a nasty plotted life orb thunderous therian uh, with grass knot. Focus Blast and, of course, Thunderbolt. Uh, Focus Blast has some clear utility into a bunch of Steel types. I saw this as a very potent setup sweeper that also could just hit very powerful attacks. Uh, in testing, I used a lot of Tail Glow Zerka Tree, and so I kind of exposed myself for Tail Glow Zerka Tree Bead, like sub Tail Glow Zerka Tree Bead, a set I used. And I was hoping by avoiding any sort of clear sweepers, I could kind of yoink people. Finally, we have an Assault Vest Physical Electros, because I was unhappy with my Physical Special Balance. Uh, in retrospect, I have blacklisted this Pokemon. It is not good. <laughs> it just doesn't hit that hard, it's not that bulky, and its moveset's kind of bad on the Physical side. You have to go mixed for Electros, so that really cuts into your bulk potential. So if you, uh, if you notice a little bit of audio jostling there, I just really need to blow my nose, I couldn't breathe. Uh, so let's jump straight into this match. So I don't actually remember my lead off here. Uh, keep in mind at this point, my main threat is to me is Excadrill. I think it has the best sweeping potential against me. Uh, Heatran is scary. Uh, the rest of it, like these two are just okay. They are ground types, which threatens. Uh, Ferrothorn, I have uh, a lot of like things that I think can melt it, especially Manectric uh, and Zapdos. So, and then Bisharp. Bisharp's a little scary, but I wasn't too threatened by it in this, especially at the beginning, at least. Uh, so, lead matchups. I went, I did go Manectric. Uh, I liked this matchup into Excadrill a lot. If it was a Scarf Excadrill, I was a little scared, but I was hoping Intimidate would cover me on that. I end up hitting a Flamethrower. Probably should have gone for Overheat, would have been a safer maneuver there. Uh, he ends up surviving the Flamethrower. And then I go into Electros, who Mold Breaker bypasses Levitate because I'm stupid and I switched to Electros. I should have gone to Zapdos or maybe Thunderous. Uh, I do bring in Zapdos at this point, who eats up a, a Rock Slide like it's nothing because of that minus one attack. And then Heat Wave gets rid of Extra Drill. At this point, I'm like, yeah, I've got this. I feel very good about my position in this game. Steel it comes in. Uh, and then we see the double into Ferrothorn. I was not threatened by Steelix, so I just threw off a Heat Wave because of its low speed death. And then ended up catching a Ferrothorn. Uh, kind of risky because they could have doubled into Heatran. We And we do see the double into Heatran at this point. Uh, and I end up going for Discharge, th expecting the double into Heatran. Uh, very, I, I thought that was very clever. Uh, discharge does a decent amount of damage. We bring in Rodom, uh, which I believe uh, eats yeah, eats up a Magma Storm like it's nothing. I'm more of a Lava Bloom guy on my Heatrans. And then I hit a Hydro Pump for the kill. Uh, if you're wanting Hydro Pump over Surf, it has 20 more base power and Rotom's kind of weak. And I'm going to use it like twice, so it's, it's worth the risk. Uh, we see a Crit Rock Slide dealing very little, and then I do miss the Hydro Pump. But at this point, I'm so bulky that I'm not super threatened by a miss. Uh, 
which is a huge part of Rotom's uh, viability here, is like, I'm just not that scared. One of the reasons I want to run Hydro Pump, I'm just not that scared of missing. And the power difference can be very significant. Uh, Knock Off does finish off my Rotom. Which is a little scary. I believe I bring in Magnazone here, which is a trap him in and go for a Choice Scarf Body Press, which does get the one-hit KO on Bisharp, so I was very happy uh, to get that little, that little sneaky sneak on him. I think I go for a Body Press here. It does absolutely nothing because Steelix is a tank on the physical side. Uh, eventually, I think I just go into Manectric and fire off some overheats. Yeah, okay. Go straight to Manetric, lowers that attack stat. Uh, we see a second curse, kind of a desperate sweep attempt. Uh, I'm just going to go for an overheat at this point, which doesn't actually quite pick up the kill. Uh, Earth Power is notably a special attack, so a bit of a suspect moves, move set using curse plus Earth Power. Um, but. You know, I, I'm not complete. It didn't really matter. I could have just brought in Zapdos and finished it off with Heat Wave, or Thunderous and finished it off with Grass Knot. Uh, what's really nice about this game is I didn't have to reveal Thunderous at all. Uh, so Thunderous at this point is still a complete mystery. Obviously, I win a very dominant victory, um, but not having to reveal Thunderous is more valuable to me than having a big win. Uh, so this one we're, we're actually going to have from my opponent's perspective. Uh, and I, I'm not really going to say anything into it. I'm going to just jump right into it. Uh, I switch up leads here if I recall. I think I go I go Zapdos. Uh, Zapdos ended up being a very valuable Pokemon throughout this match. Uh, this one, they get me. They pick up the little Flash Fire boost. Uh, a little annoying, Magma Storm does a good bit more because of it, and I'm going to end up losing my Zapdos in a pretty unfavorable way. Uh, I was hoping to pick up a Paralysis there, it would have been nice. Uh, luckily, Magma Storm does miss here. Um, so I'm able to get off another Discharge, which is very valuable uh, for just really bringing the C-Train into almost unusably low HP. Uh, bring in Zone here, which is gonna trap in the Heatran and be able to finish it off with the Body Press. And then uh, we see the Excadrill comes in. So at this point, I should preserve my zone. His body press isn't gonna kill, obviously, but I don't. So I don't switch when I could have probably just gone to Thunderous. Uh, yeah, a bit of a, a silly mistake. Bit of a weird switch into Steelix here. Uh, it just doesn't have a great matchup into Manectric. I can just two it KO with Flamethrower. Uh, especially now that Heatran's gone, I'm just not that scared about throwing off fire moves. I'm happy with my position at this point. Uh, Ferrothorn, a very weird switch in. I was a little nervous about, uh, missing the KO with a flamethrower. I probably didn't need to overheat there. Uh, I end up switching out into Rotom, it didn't, so it didn't really matter. Uh, levitate right over that earthquake, and I feel great at this point, right? I'm gonna throw off a Hydro Pump, catch the Excadrill, slaughter it, um, and I've got I've got four Pokemon at this point, and I, like I'm I'm good. Uh, I've got a Bisharp. Bisharp ends up setting up a Swords Dance right here. I go Volt Switch, which gets good damage if I go on Will O Wisp. I think this game was over. I bring in Manectric, and then Defiant triggers because I was thinking, ooh, yeah, I'll I'll weaken the Bisharp. Then I preserve the Manectric, predicting a Sucker Punch, and then Knock Off slaughters my Rotom. Uh, I end up, I go to Electros, hoping it can do something here. It dies to Knock Off. Um, and then I think I go to uh, Thunderous Therian, yeah, who is also uh, gonna, he's gonna go down to a single Sucker Punch. Uh, I might have been able to play the Sucker Punch game there, try to go for, like, nasty plots. Um, Manectra comes in and goes down to a Sucker Punch. So Bisharp is able to counter sweep me in game two, and I'm that kind of wakes me up. Like, I need to be more conscious, I need to preserve my Magna Zone, make better switches, do not switch Mega Manectric into a Bisharp. Uh, so let's see how it works out in game three. 
so far in these games, I've been very happy with these four Pokemon. They've all performed quite well. Um, Thunderous Therian hasn't had a chance to do anything yet, and Electros has died. So, that's that's not great. I end up leading Thunderous here because he, I, I reason, he doesn't know what Thunderous is. I get a very lucky Rock Slide miss and just set up a nasty plot here. This is now a very threatening Thunderous. Misses another Rock Slide, and then I hit the Focus Blast. Um, yeah, that probably mattered, and I feel kinda bad. Uh, Bisharp comes in, and I'm like, uh, never mind. Uh, yeah, I stay in, hit a Thunderbolt, does 58 to the Ferrothorn. Um, and then a second Thunderbolt will take out the Ferrothorn. This Thunderous ends up putting a massive dent in his team. Uh, Steelix comes in, I think I just fire off a Grass Knot, and it immediately knocks him to Sturdy. Uh, we see a Curse get fired off, which is interesting. I don't think he... I think he was banking on maybe like a Focus Blast Mist, didn't expect me to have Grass Knot in the back. Uh, we see Excadrill come in. At this point, like, Bisharp kills with a Sucker Punch. Uh, but no, I get to kill an Excadrill with my Focus Blast. Um, and yes, he's going to be able to get in Bisharp and uh, Sucker Punch off my Thunderous. And Bisharp's in decent position, but I'm going to be able to Magnezone Body Press it here. Quad Super Effective. Or I bring in Manectric. Going for Volt Switch because I remembered, oh yeah, I can't Mega. That's right. And then knock off, losing my Choice Scarf. I could have just gotten to Magnezone. Um, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing at this point. I think I bring in, yeah, I bring in normal Manectric. Uh, it just goes down to one Sucker Punch. I get the Static, which is nice. Um, that sucks. I bring in Electros. It goes, it takes a huge trunk from Sucker Punch. So... Bisharp was, like, Sleeper the biggest threat to my team. Uh, I think I end up Aqua Tailing this down, or... Oh, yeah, I survive a Magma Storm, and then miss an Aqua Tail. Um, and then I go down. So, good job, Electros. You watched a Bisharp die, and then missed an Aqua Tail. Uh, and then, I'm kind of scared at this point, like, Zapdos uh, ends up getting a crit into the, a crit paralysis into the Heatran, which is huge for clutching this up, because, like, I, I was pretty sure I would kill with Rotom Wash's Hydro Pump, but really all I was going for there was a dent to make sure the Hydro Pump killed, um, and it, you know, it was a little bit of suspenseful match, I probably, there was a, some mistakes I made in there, uh, but all in all, a very fun match. That ends up moving me into facing Colin in the quarterfinals. A match which has actually occurred. There's also a loser's bracket, I should say. Although, to my knowledge, none of the loser's bracket matches have happened yet. Um, so I'll cover the first round of loser's bracket and the quarterfinal matches in the next video. The last match we're looking at today is our very own Waffle the Boy Gandhi from the LGL uh, facing off against the flying team uh, using water against flying uh, CEO of Cheese World uh, Adrian, a former member of the LGL so a bit of an LGL special here uh, so let's hop right into it is uh, this is this this happened fairly recently so I, I just you just watch. Uh, we see a Celesteela lead into a Pelipper lead. Pelipper, very standard lead here. Uh, switches out into Toxapex. I immediately notice this team's pretty passive. Pex, Pelipper, and Tapu Fidi. Uh, we see a Seed... I also should say Block. This is a Block Celesteela. Yeah. Uh, seed goes down on the Toxapex. Toxic Spikes... Uh, of course, CEO of Cheese World is running Mono Flying, so Toxic Spikes do absolutely nothing. Uh, yeah, you kind of just... You, bringing hazards against Mono Flying. I, I will say, this that's Mega Drain, not Giga Drain. That is Mega Drain. 
uh, we are going to speed this up. Because this isn't particularly interesting. This is a Celestila watching as a Toxapex dies. That's it. Sometimes hitting Mega Drains, staying perfectly healthy. It is blocked in, in case you missed that. Uh, is it full health and it protects and down goes- Oh, sorry, there's a recover, I forgot. In fact, there's 14 more of those. We see the uh, second spikes go up, uh, and he ends up just sacking off the packs. He could have made that- Actually, what you were supposed to do there was do that forever, uh, until Celestila mostly ran out of PP. Uh, we see a U-turn with Greninja here. Very odd play. It's not gonna do anything. Uh, we see Swampert ends up getting blocked in. S Rock Slide is not gonna be doing a whole lot into a neutral Celestila. Who is then able to get up a leech seed <sighs> over and over again? Uh, we see a bulk up get set up by the Swampert. Uh, I'm gonna put it on fast speed again. Uh, Rock Slide gets fired off and it's dealing 23. Is plus one defense on Celesteela. Mega Drain dealing 37, healing Celly up to full. Uh, and I think, uh, Wa Kathan, Waffle the Boy is going to be lucky to fire off one hit and deals 29. So Celesteela has been chunked for a whole 29% by that whole interaction. Thunder Wave gets fired off and misses. Gyarados is now locked in. Thunder Wave hits this time, so we've got a Thunder Wave Gyarados, very interesting, uh, set. Notably, Celesteela is already healing back all of the life it lost. Uh, it seems like Waffle the Boy's main plan for flying types was rock moves, which is generally okay until they bring a Celesteela. Uh, also, Stone Edge has 8 PP. Uh, so they say, I feel mean. I was, uh, I actually wasn't logged into my account when this was happening yet, so I, I wanted to say, you are mean. Uh, we see a Guavberry proc, keeping Gyarados very crucially healthy here for a little bit longer. Uh, basically just fishing for crits at this point. Um, and Gyarados is gonna end up going down, and Celesteela will have more health than it came- than when Gyarados came in. I'm gonna keep it on fast speed, because Tapu Fini does have Nature's Madness, which does solid chunks. Uh, I say- I end up saying this is vile, because it absolutely is. Uh, Whirlpool gets off, which does nullify the healing of Leech Seed. I think it actually, it does like 1 HP more because of rounding. Yeah, it can do like 1% more. Uh, Nature's Madness gets fired off. Uh, at this point, I'd want to be Moonblasting to finish this guy off, which we do see. Uh, and so at this point, that Celesteela has eviscerated Waffle the Boy's team. Now, Rotom's gonna come in, who threatens to just electrocute everything. Notably, this is Trick Black Sludge, which, um, no. That's, that's a fine set on a poison type. But if you don't get the trick off, you start taking damage. Which means you are super pressured to trick. We see a Toxic go off. It, I guess this is a very passive Rotom. Um, this whole team's weirdly passive and obnoxious. I'm surprised we didn't see, like, electric moves flying. Uh, Scald dealing a solid 50% to Crobat in the rain. Um... But the Black Sludge that has been tricked is dealing a significant little chunk. Uh, Greninja's gonna come in. This Greninja should have an Ice Beam. Waffle. Gandhi. Put, put Ice Beam on it. You don't need Dark Pulse, you need Ice Beam! Ah! Oh my god! Uh, Zapdos ends up coming in here. We see a Yui out, it's probably gonna deal a whole- Oh, 16%! That's more than I would expect. Interestingly, Pelipper comes in on a Thunderbolt and then immediately dies. Uh, 
I guess, ah, I don't know what you're doing against this. Uh, Greninja comes back? I guess it's, oh yes, it's Rock Slide, that's right. That's ended up firing off a Rock Slide for a massive 73% and getting the flinch. And at this point, like, it, Waffle has it out. Like, even after getting his team shredded by a Celesteela, he's got outs. It's all about this Greninja. And if it had Ice Beam... Oh, uh, we see a Curse get fired off. This is a really weird Dragonite set. I happen to know it's Curse, Aqua Jet, Dragon Tail, and... <sighs> What's the last move? Detect. Uh, Lightning Bolt dealing... No Thunderbolt dealing nothing. Uh, apparently it now has Thunderbolt. Uh, yeah. Okay. Did not notice that. Uh, Togekiss comes in. Uh, ends up throwing off a Toxic into the Protective Mist. So I, I did end up making a pun uh, that I think will pop up in chat soon. Uh, Roosted up to full. In hindsight, uh, Greninja, this is a physical Greninja that happens to also be running Gunk Shot. You should be angling to Gunk Shot this Togekiss. Anyway, okay. Yeah, I said, I guess you could say that toxic mist. Uh, like mist, like mist. Yeah. Please laugh. Uh, gunk shot here is gonna deal a solid 57% to Rotom. Uh, but toxic has Greninja on a timer. U turns out to preserve their Greninja. Deals 18% because Protom is a Protean is a stupid ability. Uh, Rotom is gonna fire off a trick, trading the heavy duty boots for leftovers. Yay! Uh, ends up being Poltergeist for absolutely no damage. This this set's not good. Uh, this set's also kind of funky. Nature's Madness Whirlpool is kind of cute. There's, there's some funky things going on here. We see an Encore get fired off. Uh, critical hit, Moonblast plus a special attack drop is big game. Uh, Feeny is trapped in. Air Slash just isn't dealing that much. Be a lot, mostly because that special attack drop. Uh, it's 60% flinch chance, so we should see some. I think uh, what Waffle needs to angle here towards is getting Greninja in on a roost. So get Togekiss or on a roost or an encore. That's what you gotta do. Uh, you can't bring it in on an air slash. Uh, and so we see a nature's madness get fired off, which puts Togekiss in a very likely roost range, 45%. So we see Greninja come in and the roost. Very good plays here by Gandhi. Um, and it's gonna let him fire off a gunk shot, which does 87, leaving Togekiss with 7%. Yes, uh, Greninja is just barely unable to pick up the kill with the gunk shot there. Um, just so close. Uh, Nature's Madness. It's not. It's over. Tapu Fini is not going to break this kiss. Uh, what is its last move? I think we need to see like a Whirlpool come out for more static damage. Uh, it's, static damage is of course the name of the game at this point. We see an Encore get fired off by this disgusting little beast Togekiss. Uh, at this point, I think Dragonite can actually finish off the Fini. Too, so like it doesn't really matter uh, basically waffle the boy is fishing for moon blast crits and special special attack drops uh, it's your due diligence to try so I, I respect it uh, but at this point it doesn't look like it's going to matter oh he's also on cord so that's why he was still using moon blast uh, this does just hurt to watch good observation uh, I'm just gonna kind of, and we see the air slash crit 
to finish off the Tapu Fini and end that horrific display, honestly. Uh, let's see what game two has in store. I think at this point, we've basically seen uh, Gandhi has no good answers to Celestila. So just try your best. Feeny's probably your best. Uh, we see a Dragonite League come out here. It'd be really nice if you had a, a move that was quad effective on Dragon Flying types. It was also a very standard Greninja move. Uh, we see Dragonite is going to set up a curse here. Very interesting little Dragonite set. Uh, Thunder Wave gets fired off, which is going to kind of cap Dragonite's abilities. Uh, but Gyarados takes a huge chunk from the Thunderbolt, not killing just because I would be surprised if this Dragonite has any has good EVs. Uh, turns out when you're trying to run a curse set that's also a Thunderbolt set, it can really fuck with your EVs. There was, uh, very famously, a, there's an old um, T-Tar set that you'll, you'll see old T-Tars running like Fire Blast. You just can't really do that anymore. Uh, mixed sets are a lot harder to work these days, mostly because of this, the, uh, you can't max out all your EVs anymore. You see Gyarados comes back in, just trying to keep that attack low. Uh, eh. Gets to fire off a Stone Edge, not gonna deal much into those three defense boosts. I think we need to see a crit Stone Edge, which it does have a raised crit chance, so, very possible. Uh, we see another Dragon Tail miss, that's a... 1% chance of two of them missing. Uh, Stone Edge still doing 25 through plus 3 defense. Uh, Feeny's gonna come in, which should finish off with a Moonblast if Dragonite stays in, which it does and dies. So that Dragonite did a, put a weirdly large wrench into the plan. Uh, Celesteel is gonna come in because... Uh, CEO of Cheese World doesn't want my commentary to be interesting. Fuck you. It's so... Ah. Uh. See, this is why people play VGC. This Celesteela is why VGC exists. Because all I know is pain. Like, what am I supposed to say to this? It's just, life goes up, life goes down. Life goes up, life goes down. It's, it's profoundly boring. And like, honestly, I don't have an issue with stall. This is a little different. Like, because like, stall teams, if you're building a stall team, it's different than this. Because this, this is a Pokemon you might see on a stall team, but a stall team is about, is really about movement. Um, but honestly, if there's anything that could convince me that stall is dumb and bad and I don't like it, it is the Celesteela. Uh, good time to roost there. I don't care. Scald's stealing decent damage. Uh, I, I don't know what to say, like, yeah, it's, it's a very mean Mega Drain Celesteela set. Like, like, this kind of thing I expect to, like, 1v1, where I can kind of just go skip turn, skip turn. I guess I could. Oh, wait, 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 I want to see the Celesteela die. Ha ha! We see a plus one swapper takes down the Celesteela, and now I can engage. Uh, we see a hidden power gets thrown out. It's probably, it has to be hidden power grass. Uh, good tech here. Uh, hidden power grass is, of course, much weaker than an electric move against a Toxapex, but you are spexed up. Choice spex Aptos, interesting bring here. Uh, wow, Toxapex is very weak and very passive. 
this Toxapex in particular has felt underwhelming. Uh, at this point, like, the game's, the game looks over, right? But Greninja presents a very tangible end game. <laughs> Ends up hitting the flinch on the rock slide there, which I'm pretty sure was crucial. Uh, or at least very, very helpful in making this end game possible. Uh, we see another rock slide goes off and it deals 82. Greninja just coming just short of these 1 8 KOs. Uh, Black Sludge is gonna go onto the Greninja. We, it's revealed to be a Focus Sash. If that was like. Ah. If that was like a Life Orb, a lot of these would be 1 hit KOs. That should be a Life Orb. Right? I'm not crazy. Like, if that was a Life Orb, that Rotom would have died. That Crobat would have died. Zapdos would have died. You wouldn't even need flinches. The Togekiss would have died in the last game. Yeah. Yeah. So I end up coming down just a Black Sludged Greninja versus a full health Togekiss. Uh, a Gunk Shot gets fired off and it misses. But Togekiss is spamming Roost for some reason instead of doing anything. Uh, so this is where you play to your out. Uh, roosting will lose you the game. You're not gonna beat a bunch of gunk shots. Play to these gunk shot misses and air slash. Deal damage. Do something. There was four misses! Hey, my lord, you had so many opportunities to get chip in with this air slash. Also, notably, I would like. <laughs> I love how Gunk Shot turning you into a poison type, and now the Black Sludge is healing. That's. Mwah, chef's kiss. Love it. Black Sludge, uh, Rotom, Trick Rotom fan is officially bad. Uh, Togekiss goes down to a second Gunk Shot. Notably, if it had a life orb, it would have killed in one Gunk Shot, but, you know. Yeah. Calcs are important. Um, let's hop into game three. So the winner of this is going on to the quarterfinals. Let's take a watch. We see the Pelipper lead into the Rotom lead, which is a good lead matchup for CEO of Cheese World here. Uh, Swampert comes in, which cannot be tricked because of its Mega Stone. And Black Sludge is going to start hurting your Rotom. When you're tricking things, it should be something that, like, helps you. And... Celesteela, 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 Celesteela. We'll talk about the state of the game once the Celesteela is dead. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let me rewind. Greninja ends up taking down the Celesteel with the Rock Slide, and Waffle the Boy is down to two Pokemon. Team absolutely eviscerated. Aqua Jet dealing oh, strong 44 after, and then a U-turn that's gonna deal very little in return. Uh, it is very down to Gyarados at this point, um, and I don't like its odds. Against all this, against a Choice Specs Zapdos, um, and I'm gonna say something like, we now know CEO of Cheese World brings Celesteela. So, brings, for anyone who's watching this that's in the league, bring Celesteela checks. Bring, if you are fighting Adrian, or CEO of Cheese World, you need a Celesteela check. Um, let me check. Whew, sorry, been 49 minutes. Uh, we see Gyarados is gonna come in, eats a Zen headbutt be like it's nothing. Scares off the Crobat into a Rotom that will now take a bunch from Stone Edge, then more from Black Sludge, and then the Protect that means Rotom dies to its own Black Sludge. Uh, so we see Togekiss come in here, so at this point you really want to angle towards this, getting in your Gunk Shot in Greninja. It'd be nice to get off a chip. Honestly, if if I'm in this position, I'm 
if you had Life Orb Greninja, this would be a lot more simple. But getting a chip on Togekiss is probably the prime prerogative. Uh, so just going for Stone Edge here would probably be the play. We do see a Stone Edge that's going to deal a lot with a critical hit. Uh, which angles towards a Greninja cleanup very nicely. Uh, but we just see a Stone Edge take him down. Uh, it would be really nice for Gyarados to be able to outspeed something and hit a Stone Edge. It's just... Oh, but wait, we see the Aguav Berry. I forgot about this. Giving it some leeway, but it's not going to outspeed a Zapdos. Uh, so it is going to be taken down. And now it's just the flinch game. Can Greninja pick up two flinches to win this match? We see the Rock Slide comes out. Uh, even a Life Orb wasn't killing there, so you needed that flinch, but you got it. Let me see a Dark Pulse. And it doesn't kill! Ooh. But it flinches! <laughs> so, you go for the Rock Slide there. I know it's less accurate, but... Ah. Again, if you're a Life Orb, that Dark Pulse was killing, and yeah. Uh, we see the third Dark Pulse comes out. Uh, we're gonna see Crobat come out, and... Uh, does Greninja outspeed Crobat? I don't think so. It does! So, does we see... Do we see the final flinch? No! Rock Slide does not flinch to clutch up that game. Waffle the boy runs out of luck at the end. A very, very close match. Uh, and if Celesteela wasn't ripping through that team, I don't think it would have been close at all. We would have seen Gandhi sweeping up but Celesteela just eviscerating the team and even if it's cobbled together between a bad Rotom set and choice Vex Aptos and a odd Crobat and an annoying Togekiss and a very strange Dragonite even if that isn't working you did so much damage with the Sela that it just wasn't able to recover so I'm gonna call the call the day there um, and I'm actually all of the Quarterfinal matches have been recorded, so I'm going to do a shorter shoutcasting video that will come up on the same day as this. So, keep an eye open for that, uh, and uh, see you soon.